All right, so we're gonna look at some percent increase or percent decrease problems. And so we're gonna talk about them just a little bit as an overview, and then we'll say more about them uh, in, with some specific examples. So in general, the only diff real difference between percent increase and percent decrease problems uh, in practical terms is that increase problems use a plus sign and decrease problems use a minus sign to set up our equation. So the original value plus the increase is equal to the new value versus the original value minus the decrease is equal to the new value. So in general, um, since the percent increase or decrease is calculated by the percentage, the proportion times the original value, we can actually get this general equation for all percent increase or decrease problems. The original value, either plus or minus, depending on whether it's an increase or a decrease, um, plus or minus the percent times the original value, and that's equal to the new value. This is our general um, algebraic construction. Now, in a percent decrease problem, you can't go more than 100% decrease, whereas in a percent increase problem, you can do more than 100% increase, but that doesn't really change the way that we set up the equation. Now, um, we want to think about this in the context of a couple of examples. Sometimes these examples are really straightforward and you can, you can work them out in pieces. And sometimes they're complex enough, you're working backwards from the new value. And so we need to, to have this slightly more complex version of our equation. So let's look at this first example, which is nice and straightforward. You hardly need algebra for this at all, mostly just arithmetic. So suppose that you're looking for a new dress marked at $80, um, but the rack is marked at 30% off the list price. How much money will the dress cost at the register? So $80 is our original value. The percent de decrease is 30%. So we have 30% as a decimal times our $80. That's the decrease amount. And then if you plug these in, the decrease turns out to be $24. And so 80 minus 24 is 56. So the new value that we will pay at the register uh, before tax is $56. So similarly, if you're paying tax on something, you have a same, same scenario, but you're paying an increase. So at the hardware store, you pick up a hammer and other miscellaneous items totaling $150. The tax in the area is 6%. How much do you will be charged on your, your credit card or whatever for your items? So here, again, we have $150 is our original value. We're adding on a 6% tax. That's our percent, that's our increase. And so we plug these numbers in. 0.06 times 150 is $9. And so 150 plus nine is our new value, $159. Now, when we are given the new value and not the original value, then things are a little bit more complicated and that's where a little bit of algebra will come in. So again, we're still gonna start with the same general problem, the same, same general equation, but now we're given that you're purchasing textbooks at a bookstore and the amount charged to your credit card is 187.25. That's the post-tax value. That's the new value. In the county where the, the books were purchased, you, you had a tax of 7%. So our original value is actually unknown. That's what we're, what was the pre-tax price of the books? That's the part we don't know. So we'll call the X. The increase, the amount of tax we paid is 7% as a decimal times X. And that's equal to the new value they gave us in the problem. Now it's very tempting to try to calculate this just based on 7% of the tax the taxed price. 7% of this and kind of work backwards, but that doesn't work because the tax is based on the pre-tax rate, not 7%, not so that it's 7% of the post-tax rate. So you can't, you can't cheat with this. Um, so we're going to add our like terms. That's going to give us 
one plus 0.07 is 1.07x. And then we divide by 1.07 in order to get the original value, which is 175. And if you were to now run this backwards, 175 was the original price, 7% of 175 turns out to be that 1225 difference. And when you add them together, you do get the correct value. Now, if you try to do this in the other direction, uh, it's not gonna work. So let's be clear just to show you why it doesn't work. If you actually try to calculate 7%, like a percent de decrease of this amount, you're actually going to end up subtracting more than what you should because this, this decrease that you're calculating will be 7% of the 187.25, which is higher, it's more than the 7% of the 175. This will take you too low. And then when you try to re run the, the experiment backwards again to check your math, then you take 7% of this now 174 value, then you don't actually get back to the 187.25. So this does not work. So you can't actually do this. You can't treat a tax like a percent decrease to kind of back out of it. You have to set up the equation using our general rule that we showed you before, original value plus percent times original value equals new value. So that here, since we don't know the original value, we call that X. And then we solve for X from there. All right. During a period of hard economic times, Bob, a salesman has his salary set at 10, uh, at 10 has his salary increased by 10% to help, or decreased actually, um, sorry, I'm missing a word, to help keep the company afloat. If his salary after the cut is 40,500 per year, what was his salary last year? So this is a decrease formula. So again, our general formula, but with a minus sign. And then we set this up exactly the same way. This is the new value, the value that he has after the cut goes here, the original value is his salary from the previous year, which we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. So we call that X. And then the 10% decrease. And again, we combine our two Xs. 1X minus 0.1X is going to give us 0.9X. So this salary is 90% of the old value. And if we divide by X, we can solve for, in this case, his old salary was 45,000. And occasionally these problems will ask us to solve for the percentage. And it works somewhat similarly, although we have the original value and the new value, the X then becomes our percent. Keep in mind that this will give us a decimal and then we will have to convert the decimal to a percentage if that's what we want to report. So suppose the population of a certain town was 105,000 in 2010 and 102,010 in 2011, so it decreased. Um, that's why we'll, we'll use a negative sign in our formula. Even if we haven't been told this was a decrease problem, we know that this is decreased because this is smaller, the new value is smaller than the older value. So if we set this up, we're now gonna move 105,000 over to the other side of the equation by subtracting. And then we will have our percent decrease term. We're gonna divide out. And even though this is negative, and even though this term turned out to be negative, two negatives cancel, they make a positive, negative, negative cancel. And we end up with this value. Again, this is our decimal equivalent. And so we multiply by 100 in order to turn this into a percentage. And we get, in this case, about 2.8 and change percent. And typically these problems will tell you to round them to a certain number of decimal places.